um, Central uh, Northwest London NHS Foundation Trust. We're a large organisation. We have 5,000 staff. Um, we cover a lum number of boroughs in London, so from Camden all the way out to Hillingdon, lots of other boroughs where we deliver services such as Enfield, Surrey, etc. So we have a broad kind of reach. The first little RCT that we did, it was absolutely distinctly separate from talking therapy in that um, all the therapy was purely music, musical. And we did a, a treatment fidelity study to see whether or not the different um, therapy that was offered was actually um, coherent and modulus. So to the, the extent to which the interventions that we offered were the same, and, and they were all pretty uniform, but the, the sort of common feature was that the therapists hardly spoke in the sessions, and the patients hardly spoke in the sessions. It was all acute inpatient, one-to-one -one music therapy. And basically what happened was from the moment the patient walked in, they played music for half an hour with the, with the therapists. And it, would, it definitely kind of chimes a lot with what you're saying. So it's very exciting um, to have this is happening here, right? I think it's a... So November saw the opening of the centre, um, ICAT. Uh, we've grown a reputation and have consolidated some, it's consolidated some of our thinking um, around the initial findings based on the best evidence available to us. We developed a unique competencies framework, which is now being piloted across the trust, especially looking at supervision, which is Arrow's company leading. Um, we've offered training post-qualifying post um, training in um, for over 80 uh, post uh, students now, uh, in mentalization based approaches, um, interpersonal approaches, uh, in intervention psychosis. Um, the ratings have been excellent. Uh, across the board, about, on average, people said around about 24 25 percent increase in skills and knowledge that they think is that they can apply to their clinical groups. So it's quite a significant um, <coughs> change for them. Does art therapy, or art therapies I should say, why does it make people better? What we have in most of the patients that we see sadly in CMWR are individuals whose history of interrelations with other people led to a closure of the epistemic superhighway. They're no longer able to learn from others. We put them in a range of different situations where what they, the experience they have is someone who is interested in them, who is responding to them contingently in a range of different ways. With uh, drama, with uh, uh, visual, with music, with whatever else. But they feel for a, a brief time that they actually matter. They as people matter. And that frees that epistemic superhighway. What it does is works with perception. So it works with the patient's perception of their symptom, or perception of the um, result of their symptom, which could be pain, of course, it often is pain. So we're looking at changing perception and therefore changing behavior. And that's really the whole aim, to change perception, a bit like Peter was saying is to develop that safeness enough for them to feel held enough to perhaps open a little bit to trusting someone else has got something to offer. It promotes vitality, activity, it promotes energy, it promotes them to feel they can do something finally. They can, they can act and have a, more of a function as well.